Welcome to our lifelong learning and skills training panel. Our panelists are all experts in adult and professional training. Together with us today, we have Ms. Brikena Jomachi, Director at Lifelong Learning Platform, a civil society enthusiast and Elbosan native. Mr. Ulrich Scharf, co-founder of Skills Lab. Ms. Elira Demirar, Director at National Employment and Vet Agency. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I can also hear on my side. We would like to start with Mr. Scharf, who will give, give us a short presentation about his company, Skill Lab, and how it helps match people, skills, trainings, and jobs. Excellent. Uh, can you hear me? And am I promoted? Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Scharf. Perfect. Um, you would need to promote me to uh, presenter mode so I can share my slides. Okay. Thank you. Is it okay for you now? Now I'm promoted and you can see me. Uh, pleasure to be here and pleasure to present. Um, let, me, uh, let me just jump directly into the presentation um, and share my screen. Um, one second. Uh, uh, this is, um, sorry. No, this is, uh, Let's do this. Um, and I hope you can see the full screen of the presentation. Can you confirm that? Yes, we can see everything. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm Ulrich Schaff from uh, SkillUp, we're an Amsterdam based uh, impact business, and we empower job seekers to turn their skills into careers. And so with with this, I'm going to give you a quick outline of our work and the innovation that brings into it and what that also means for future job seekers. So generally, as you enter that the labor market today or are in the labor market today, this is an environment of massive changes. We see the trend of digitization and automation. We want to transition towards a green economy. Uh, COVID is happening. So there's a lot of trends that basically put a lot of pressure also on job seekers that need to transition to new environments. And what we see in this, that it's absolutely essential that we understand the person's skill set. Um, because if we understand the skills of an individual and not just their degrees and the past job titles, it suddenly becomes much better possible to help them to transition to new careers or to think about jobs that they might have never thought about um, but where they bring the right skills into it. It also becomes possible to match people better to education and training, as well as to utilize prior existing education and training. And last but not least, if you understand and capture a person's skill set, you empower that individual also to actively communicate their skills to employers and people they can work with. Now, um, let me explain a little bit of how we in this environment therefore roll out our tool. So we have two components. Uh, number one is we have a mobile application that is handed out to job seekers. So these are individuals that want to create for themselves a pathway to employment. Um, and our clients are employment and career services as well as training providers that help those job seekers to find work. And uh, the simple way how it works is the people that use our mobile application capture their skills and receive a career orientation while the employment services as well as training providers benefit from the detailed skill profiles that help them to understand what somebody can do, as well as benefit from very detailed and targeted matches to training providers. Uh, to dive into this a little bit more on how the skill profiling process works is that every user of our application goes through a skill assessment of each experience of their life. So we captured the labor market in 13,500 different skills and competencies. And we want to know from the user through this AI-based interview um, what they exactly did in all of their experiences and not just their jobs and their education, but also from other experiences like hobbies or community work. 
Um, this allows us to understand completely what the skill set of an individual is. And this can be easily for somebody in their 20s around 70 skills. Um, and we can then take that skill set and really match it to every single job that they can see around that individual. Uh, so that's something like a 360 degree career orientation, as well as training and education that allows to close the gap towards a specific job somebody finds interesting or wants to apply for. And the power of this is it's number one, something like a 360 degree career orientation. And number two, it allows us to think about training and education in a very different way. It's something very specific we do to advance our chances of getting specific jobs. And then last but not least, employers still like old school applications. Uh, they want to receive those, but our tool generates automatically generated applications that are always uniquely fit and generated for the match between the user and the job they're applying for. So they always make the unique case of what somebody learned uh, throughout their life that prepared them for the specific job they're now applying for. And at the start, when you know somebody goes through this process of skill profiling and receiving a career orientation, then uh, the benefit from this is also that they generate these detailed skill profiles, which help career counselors and employment services to really have a much better service delivery and counseling to those individuals. So all in all, this provides what we think is the future of career support uh, going forward. So. You know, from, from, from the way our tool at least is used, it's very simple. You know, our clients and partners distribute licenses. People are empowered on their own to do this, to capture their skills, explore careers, and then apply for jobs. And through that, they also generate the data that helps people around them to provide better services to them. So that's it in a nutshell. And let me close here. If you find this interesting, please always never hesitate to reach out to us. And I'm very curious now what I hear from the other panelists. Thank you very much, Mr. Shar, for your presentation. I would like to ask uh, Ms. Jomachi about life love, lifelong learning. Why is it so important, especially to Albanian youth? And how do you see it changing in the next five years? Good afternoon to everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we yes. can hear you. Perfect. Person data, because I'm also Albanian and I can uh, say hello in Albanian as well. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I will try to answer to your questions, although I have to say if I knew what will happen in five years, I would be uh, maybe a millionaire. <laughs> Uh, however, maybe just introducing a bit my, my organization and um, reacting a bit on also what uh, Ulrich uh, presented as well. Uh, thank you for, for your presentation, very interesting work as well. Um, so the Lifelong Learning Platform is a, it's a European umbrella organization of uh, European networks that represent the different education and training providers from early childhood education to adult education. And so we all promote a holistic vision to education, which means that we never stop learning and we start as early as we actually are born. Uh, some say, uh, some research says that we also learn in, in the belly <laughs> while we are uh, not yet uh, born. So, um, and then we continue to, to, uh, to learn in our life um, until we die, because uh, basically, especially nowadays, with the digital and the green transition and the very frequent crisis that society goes through, uh, it means that we need to up, uh, update our competences, our skills and attitudes regularly. So we need to keep up to date in order to be able to actively participate in the society, which has two components economically, but also socially. So obviously contributing to the society means being able to, to contribute to the economy, prosperity, but it also means staying active as a citizen, which is also a very important component of uh, lifelong learning. And um, I did hear from Ulrich the, 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 the fact that how important skills, uh, focus skills approach um, to education and training is. And we usually tend to say competence-based approach. 
because we believe the competences is a much larger and broader definition of what an individual needs to acquire um, and skills usually in our association will tend to be very technical uh, and related to a specific sector industry um, and therefore a skill that it's uh, maybe uh, also taught differently but it's it's not it's just one part of the knowledge that you require. And in the last years, it's true that the focus on skills has been very important, mainly because of the economic crisis. Uh, and we have been also um, recently hearing more and more um, transversal skills, so soft skills. So, so not only industry and technical skills, but also uh, other uh, skills that I, I usually prefer to say competences rather than skills, but they can also be, of course, skills. Um, because indeed, uh, while we look at the future, uh, even if the basis of technical skills are required and needed, uh, we need transversal and soft skills in order to adapt to the uh, frequent changes in the uh, in the society, and uh, it's it's very important to look at this as a basis uh, of uh, transforming our education and training systems because we we will not know what will happen in five years. You saw the pandemic hit us without even realizing that it was coming. So, and we were unprepared from a digital perspective. And yet digital was not a new issue, it was an issue for decades and decades that we have been working on. But only when the pandemic hit us, we actually realized that we were not ready. We were not ready to continue education, to continue a lot of public services. Uh, to citizens and a lot of other uh, services were not possible because they were not ready to shift quickly enough to digital technology. And of course, it also came with consequences on individuals uh, and not having uh, the, the necessary skills uh, to adapt. And we are moving to this digital revolution in a, in a very fast uh, path, I would say. While in Europe, uh, we have an issue of basic skills. So we have over 40% uh, of the uh, European populations uh, missing uh, basic skills, literacy, numeracy, reading, writing. And uh, we also have uh, quite a high percentage of people lacking uh, basic digital skills. So in order to speak of how to prepare for the coming five years, uh, and how it affects also what you were discussing today on, on the tourism industry. Uh, we need to be able to address the very basic issue, which is basic skills and basic digital skills. Uh, so these are very important components that uh, the lifelong learning strategies in most EU member states, and I think in Albania, it's also very important to, um, to have a holistic a lifelong learning strategy that looks at different um, um, ways and settings to acquire skills and knowledge and, and, and the competences. And this means that schools have a role to play, universities have a role to play, but they shouldn't be the only one. We need, of course, more professional training, we need more adult education training, uh, and we need providers that are not only in formal settings, but also in non-formal learning environments, which, some, which sometimes are uh, formats uh, that, uh, or education that is provided uh, in a way that is closer to certain learners that have problems with um, formal academic uh, systems. And also, I think we should be able in our strategy to look at how we acknowledge and valor valorize and validate or recognize the knowledge that is acquired without the individual being aware of it. So this is also a, a, an element that we are working a lot at EU level with the European institutions. How can we validate knowledge, skills and competences that individuals learn without necessarily being qualified for or without necessarily being aware of uh, just by uh, being in activities that uh, teach them. So this type of, um, of skills and, and uh, competences. So I think these are some of the 
the, the things that we need to keep in mind as we speak of lifelong learning um, for now and in the future uh, for the industry. And uh, it's also true for youth, uh, youth in Albania and elsewhere in Europe. Um, are keen and very curious to learn. And we see that there is a massification and, and a democratization of higher education, uh, but we must make sure that they have other opportunities after that to continue learning. And we must make sure that there is also uh, the willingness and the support uh, for those groups that have less economical uh, possibilities to continue learning because people, young people finish in, in countries like Albania, they will finish uh, their graduation and they need to earn their life. So they need to start a job, whatever job that gives them income to, to survive. So uh, in that condition, uh, you actually can't continue further training and education if you need it. So uh, we need to also uh, provide a system that allows people to while working, also continue learning. So I think also companies, uh, the private sector and the uh, industry in general needs to provide continuous training in-house when possible. And when it's not possible, member states, so the governments should provide uh, and uh, should support skills development for the industry as well, because it's in the interest of the economic and social prosperity. Uh, in a long term. So I will stop maybe here Thank and you then happy to hear from the others. Thank you very much, Ms. Ramadze. So uh, we would like to continue with Ms. Demire. I'd like to ask you some questions. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So uh, the questions are, the first one is, what should young people expect regarding training throughout their careers? How does ACPA, so National Employment and Skills Agency, keep up with the changing demands of technology and the work phase? And what will vocational centers look like in 2030? Okay. Did you also have my presentation so that you can share it and maybe I can speak through those slides or you want me to answer the question at the beginning? Okay, you, you can answer the questions and we mm -hmm. can keep up with the presentation. Okay. So the first question was what we what uh, the young people should the expect regarding the... uh, training throughout their careers. Uh, okay, training and career is two different things. So I I will try to explain what how we see that. I totally agree with the previous speakers that uh, already shared the importance of competences and skills acquired through the life. Uh, somehow you, uh, a young person, uh, most of the skills are educational, uh, get it from the educational background, from uh, high school or professional schools, or they can get uh, competences and skills through other ways. In different developed countries, there is also the, the knowledge acknowledgement of uh, previous learning experience, which is something that more and more countries have in their, uh, let's say, background of procedures, how somebody can be licensed or certified for the knowledge the knowledges that he acquired uh, out of the normal or the, the usual uh, system of uh, knowledge uh, and uh, uh, background education. This is, uh, I'm happy to confirm that we already um, uh, send it for improvement, one DCM, a decision of Council of Ministers, to approve the procedures, the clear procedures, how to acknowledge the previous learning uh, expertise from different people. This is a very good thing for different uh, young people, but not only, who um, have acquired knowledges out of the normal system, as we said, and they can continue their education or their uh, further, let's say, movement in career. On the other side, I am uh, totally aware and we, we are all aware that in Albania, uh, skills forecasting and the economic sector forecasting is something that has been missing through these last 30 years. It is a big challenge for a country in development to uh, have the right institution instruments and procedures 
to forecast the skills so that it helps on the career orientation. Career orientation is based mainly on information about economic sectors, about professions, and not to go and to go furthermore, like Mr. Woodrick was explaining, each of the profession now, professions are getting more, let's say, um, uh, how I can say skills and competencies are somehow um, having more priority than just uh, just a diploma. Uh, now, for example, people who has uh, uh, good skills or digital skills, they can be employed everywhere and uh, they, the businesses does even uh, are not even interested on a diploma in some of the profession. I'm not speaking for all of them, as well as there are professions which without some digital skills or some other skills, they cannot continue or they cannot progress in their career because there are actual skills very important in the labor market that you should absolutely follow. Then I come to the, the word that uh, Brikena was speaking that in Albania, we need to uh, consolidate and to create the long uh, lifelong learning strategy. It is one of the things that I have also put in my presentation that we will require during the new strategy that will uh, uh, revise on you know, during 2022, we'll revise, we'll make the new strategy. And this is absolutely the most important component that I will push forward. Uh, with, a, with our institution, National Employment and Skills Agency, to create the opportunity to have some right measures so that we can have a, a, our labor market to have components and procedures to help in this, uh, let's say, lifelong learning. Uh, we had a lot of problems in our labor market. We have problems of education because labor market is a mirror of all the governmental policies in different education background, social initiatives, everything, it reflects on the labor market. Now we have businesses that they have vacancies, but they don't find the right people to fill into the vacancies. So, uh, and we have people, but they don't have the right skills and willingness to follow a sector because either they have lack of information because our uh, public institution uh, do not have, as I said, skills forecasting, pre right procedures for having the right information for career orientation. And so there are different gaps and pro uh, problems that we face. Now, coming to the positive side, uh, we have through labor offices, we have changed completely the assessment and profiling instruments through our system to assess what a young person or each of the job seeker, uh, what does he have and what does he need? We implemented ESCO. ESCO is uh, based on the competencies for each of the profession and it is what a very modern, let's say, instrument used in most of the European uh, countries. Not all of them does use ESCO, they use ESCO more, but we implemented ESCO just for the purpose of understanding more when we assess, we have to understand more on competence and then skills. And when we do the intermediation procedures, we get more matching through the competencies rather than only the profession. The old way of matching, it, it has always been based mainly on the professions. Now we want to go a step further. We'll go step by step on that. It's not everything so perfect, but at least we set the ground for catching up with the rhythm of the, of the modernization of the development that the labor market is requiring. Uh, for young person, how to proceed in their career? We still have a lot to do about the career orientation. As I said, the basis is the information in the labor market, skills forecasting, which are the economic, sec economic sector forecasting. Developed countries has institution who provide not only statistic, but also economic provision, which are the economic sectors that will continue to be, let's say, dominated the industry and the economy of a country. Uh, we should, uh, I think as a government, I cannot speak uh, in the, in the foot of the ministry, but I think that more should be done on the forecasting, because this is how we guide them for career. Uh, all the people, the young people who want to follow a path, 
but who, who are not decided or due to lack of information or proper information, they used to follow a general, let's say, uh, career, like the high school or rather than being more specialized in the sector. And now in the labor market, we see that there are sectors, there are professions, there are skills who are validated much more than I am validated. Like, uh, for example, because I finished the university, I, it's not that uh, uh, comparable. The fee that I get with some, uh, let's say, professions which are uh, less educating your less um, background, but they are well paid in the labor market because this is the labor market who completely changed and uh, let's say impact uh, all the decisions of the parents and uh, let's say the, the children. Uh, we have another good thing. It's the youth guarantee. The youth guarantee is a practice uh, implemented, started to speak uh, in the European country during 2013 and being implemented in 2014. It has been a very good, let's say, initiative. It's based on, a, uh, on a different programs to enable the, uh, let's say, the tracing of a young person between 15 to 29 that within four months, he is out of the employment, training, education, or a practice in, the labor, in, the, in a work, uh, let's say, place. Uh, I'm happy to announce that we now, uh, with the, through the technical assistance of EPA, EU, uh, let's say, funded, we are, get, we are developing, designing the system, the National Youth Guarantee Plan, with which will define who is the main actors, who are the, let's say, the guidance on that, and uh, defining some of the best programs that we can have. And with the third EPA then uh, assistance, we'll have much more funds to apply uh, this national uh, plan of youth guarantee and to help the young people regain their experience, re-enter in the labor market through different programs. It can be like a reorientation, reskilling, upskilling, or entering into the education. So it can be a lot of programs. For example, in Brussels, there were more than 57 development uh, package to support the, the young people in one of the, of the public employment services we have been there. Uh, as I said, for the career orientation, we have set some places. The assessment, ESCO is a good base. We have some tests like uh, find yourself in our web page of uh, NIAS. Uh, we get a model for career orientation center through RISI Albania. It has been a collaboration with the uh, municipality at the beginning. We will start from 2022 to get more, let's say, involvement involvement of that and then we will see how we can support the young people also through the youth guarantee let's say perspective uh, for the professional education and trainings it's absolutely true that we need to go further with that uh, for the digital skills happy to announce that we now have approved the first level of digital skills according to the eu standard we will implement it in all the vtcs and for all the job seekers registered in our database, they will get for free soft skills, digital skills, and decent work. Three packages which are very important to enter the labor market. The soft skills package is developed, uh, giving some soft elements, but also uh, job reach and job search elements. So it's very nicely, let's say, uh, designed to help these people who never entered the labor market to, to start uh, understanding. We'll also give it for the, all the young person registered in the professional educational schools. We'll start having these three package trainings within the last uh, year they have uh, in the professional schools, maybe even later to the others, but uh, for the moment we want to pilot it within our NICE, our, our agency, because we also uh, have in administration our professional schools. We are also doing something else very interesting in bringing the labor market a little bit more together and understanding what the, what the businesses need. 
we now designed the approved the board of the businesses with a sectoral approach. Uh, in the labor market, we want to bring together labor offices, VTCs, and vet schools. All of them should have uh, one main except for other tasks and uh, priorities, we'll have one main priority to coordinate uh, with the businesses to create this board of businesses with the sectoral approach. Like if hotelry tourism is one sector, economic sector, they will organize and they will place activity to understand, to inform, to offer services to the business, to this uh, sectoral approach, with all the institutional mindset, like one ACPA, like we say, one agency. And uh, for 2022, they will all be implemented. We started with, with one sector, I think with the support also with the lead group, I think we'll invite him to, to continue with uh, another economic sector. I will tell another important component, we have only 10 VTCs, vocational training centers spread in all Albania. We have 35 vet schools. As you see, when we speak about lifelong learning, training and reskilling, it's much more important sometimes. So we have uh, finalized an optimizing plan, optimization plan for the vet uh, providers. And we have decided that some of the schools will also function as multifunctional centers offering also uh, short-term courses and also long-term like the, being like uh, vet providers. This will help us being spread more in the country with uh, training provision. Uh, what else about the trainings in the region, even through board of the businesses, even through uh, three partite uh, agreements, uh, all the businesses can have the opportunity to register the job seekers, to get job seekers, to train job seekers for free uh, in the labor market. So I think there are good initiatives to, let's say, to get together with all the partners in the labor market. I will stop here and maybe you have to. Thank you very much, Ms. Demire. I'd like to ask one more question to Mr. Sharf because we have uh, very less time sure. for the next panel. Can you hear me, Mr. Sharp? Yeah, loud and clear, thanks. I'd like to ask you, what's the next big tech innovation that will impact the European job market or skills training sectors? So uh, what I presented here, and you know, is essentially our approach of connecting people, jobs and education. Um, and uh, doing that through our tool. What our hope is moving forward, what's going to happen is that the way we think about skill validation, education and training and learnings is completely going to change. So we heard a lot about the validation. We hope that that becomes much more cost efficient and available to every person in the European Union. We hope that the way we think about vocational training and education, that that's ongoing in somebody's life. So that's the lifelong learning uh, part and that every person continuously takes small courses here and there. And then the third part is that we also really hope that people start to think about jobs as education, meaning I take a specific job to acquire certain competences to build a career for myself in a certain field. Um, and you know, we have a lot of initiatives on the EU level. I think the technology is slowly going to go uh, getting there. Really now it becomes about like systematically making this available to every European citizen. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. That's it Pleasure. for this panel. We would like to thank once again, Ms. Jomachi, Ms. Demira and Mr. Sharp for being us with here today. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you.